Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel and to today's video all about what's the difference between the current ratio and the quick ratio, also known as the acid test. My name is James, I'm an ACCA qualified accountant from the UK and on my channel I help out accounting students around the world pass their examinations and I dedicate all my videos because of my subscribers' requests. And as you can see in the screen, all of the ratio videos on the channel are dedicated to Anurag, so thank you so much for that. And if you've got any questions or videos you'd like to see, drop me a comment below and along with what you think of the video, really helpful as ever. And be sure to actually subscribe below so you get access to all my free materials. And as ever, feel free to give it a massive like. I really appreciate it. And it means more accounting students can see the videos. Because in today's class, what we're going to be walking and talking you through are the actual current ratio itself, the formula, the quick ratio itself, the formula as well. These are going to be really key for your examination. Calculating these with an example that you can take the process and apply it to any question you have in front of you. Then analyzing the two ratios because in any examination you're going to have to calculate and interpret. Then we're going to link this back to real world applications because I have no doubt it's going to be put in a scenario for you that this is where you're going to add some extra marks. With finally a nice summary of differences at the end with everything that you can interpret all on one page and I've put all the timings in the description below so feel free to check it out down there. So coming on to the current ratio formula itself, and this is fundamental if you've got tested on this, that you understand it's the current assets divided by the current liabilities. And when we're referring to current, this is less than or within a year. And the actual answer exp is expressed as a ratio. So when you calculate it, you have the answer on a basis to one, and you have an, an answer in pounds, for example, an answer's worth of current assets is compared to one pound's worth of current liabilities in a company. When we come on to the working example later on in the lecture, this will make a bit a lot more clear for you. And it represents how many times we are actually covering our current liabilities on there. So in an ideal world for a current ratio, it's about 1.5 to 1 is a healthy balance that you'd be looking for on the majority of companies. And all these aspects that maybe you've got to go find it within a set of financial statements can be found within the balance sheet, also known as the statement of financial position. But coming on to the quick ratio now, and make sure you get jotted down the actual formula on there. And the first key thing to note is that the quick ratio deducts the inventory, whereas the current ratio includes the inventory. The reason for the difference on this is that what we're saying here is, well, if we've got inventory sat on our balance sheet as a current asset, why haven't we sold it already? Or why haven't we got rid of it? It's to say, well, is it just been sat there idle? And it gives us another perspective to look at the working capital management within the business and how the cash flow cycle works. In other words, how the cash is coming in versus how the cash is actually leaving the business. Again, the actual answer that you'll calculate on your calculator is expressed as an answer to one. And as ever, just like the current um, ratio before, it's now saying a pound's worth of current assets, but excluding inventory now, compared to one pound's worth of current liabilities in the company. So in your description, when you're actually talking about the quick ratio, be sure that you are really specific as to that we are now talking about with no inventory within my discussion. Again, it's based on the number of times that we're covering the actual current liabilities within that set period. But the actual quick ratio now that we've taken out the inventory is considered to be healthy on a one-to-one -one basis. So one pound's worth of current assets minus our inventory for one pound's worth of current liabilities on there. But the key thing just to reiterate at the bottom, so the quick ratio, also known as the acid test, deducts inventory. Don't make the silly mistake in your exam not to do that. Because now we're actually going to calculate this using an example, and maybe you've got an actual question that you've got uh, maybe on a workbook at home. If you walk and talk it through, just like in this example now, it's definitely gonna help you out. So first of all, make sure in an examination you actually write down the formulas. This is so that you can actually gain all the workings and the marker can follow it through. Because as you can see on here, the key aspect is utilizing brackets, but making sure you get everything down, showing that in the, current, in the actual current ratio, actually includes the, the inventory versus the actual quick ratio, as you can see there by the minus 50 
actually deducts it. This then is going to give us an answer of 2 to 1 for the current ratio and 1 to 1 for the quick ratio that we need to now go on and interpret. So analysing the two ratios itself. So we've talked about the two benchmarks on there for the current ratio and the quick ratio, just as a, just as a highlight. But like in our answers that we just touched on um, in the previous slide, we actually had a current ratio above um, 1.5 to 1. We had a 2 to 1, whereas the quick ratio, we had a 1 to 1. But you've then got to say to yourself, well, from my answer that you're looking at uh, your house and you're going through in your workbook, what if I actually have a higher ratio? So the answer is above those benchmarks. So for example, it could be four to one on there. So you've got four pounds worth of current assets for every one pounds worth of current liabilities if it was to do with the current ratio. Or you can actually refer that to the quick ratio. You just have to deduct the inventory. But in essence, what we're saying there is we've got too much cash tied up within current assets and we could put that to better use maybe investing it in non-current assets, so property, plant and equipment perhaps, that you could actually relate to in your example. We've got to assess if the inventory has impacted on this, so try to understand from the scenario you're given, is it a business where it has large volumes of inventory that they need that to actually operate, or potentially do they actually have very limited inventory and the reason why their current assets is so high is potentially because they've maybe got a high cash balance, again, could be utilising it better, or maybe their trade receivables are high. The flip side to that is what was if we have a low ratio now, so below those benchmarks up at the top. And again, we've got an, a, a sort of hypothetical answer on there of a 0.5 to 1 for either of those that would be below the benchmarks. And there's a risk here of not having enough working capital, key phrase to get down there, to pay uh, to actually make the payments for our short-term obligations, those liabilities that could arise. And because these are short-term liabilities, they can fluctuate from month to month. It's not like a long-term liability that you'd expect to be the same amount on there. And the reason why this is so important and a good point to get down in your exam is there is the risk of liquidation and potential bankruptcy if we don't meet those obligations. So you might actually have to sell off some of our non-current assets or the owners of the business may have to put in some of their own funds to cover this. But we now have to actually say, well, how can we actually link this to real world application? And I've put on there three examples, but feel free to use uh, a sort of production or manufacturing area or industry that you are comfortable with because not every business operates in the same way and you could get given a completely different scenario in your examination. But the key thing to be aware of that all the individual factors from those current assets and current liabilities are found within the balance sheets, so the statement of financial position, and they're all applied in the formulas. But then you've got to take the scenario, such as a legal solicitors on here that may have high, high trade receivables, so high levels of debtors, of customers that owe them money, and that could be really inflating their current, current ratio, versus a food manufacturer that is more likely to have higher levels of inventory due to the actual nature and purpose of the business, but this may be counteracted that they may have agreements in place with their trade payables or creditors that they may make payments within 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to offset it and to try and balance it out. A building and material supplier, on the other hand, try to picture this, that they buy these in in huge bulk quantities on there, trying to benefit from economies of scale. So they're gonna have high levels of inventory sat in their warehouse and stock probably sat there for a long time. So that means that when customers come into the warehouse to buy it, they actually pay there straight away. So hence they might actually have low trade receivables. So the key thing there is that you make sure you analyze the current scenario and situation you're given and apply it directly to those figures in your answers. An overall sort of summary of differences now. So what we're just pulling back on what we've talked about in today's lecture, as you can see on there, the current ratio and the quick ratio split down the middle. You've got the two different formulas, the two benchmarks you need to be aware of, one that includes inventory, just to reiterate again, is the current ratio, and one that excludes inventory, that is the quick ratio. And both of them are to both types of liquidity ratios, all about that working capital and the cash flow management um, introducing to the analysis of, well, what cash flow is coming into the business from our actual trade, uh, sorry, our current assets now, 
versus the actual funds leaving the business in our current liabilities. So maybe a bank overdraft that is due. But if you follow this summary of differences on the final slide here, I'm sure you're going to get full marks on your examination. Well, the final thing I can say is make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos and be sure to give this one a massive like and thumbs up, leaving any comments below, as I said. Click one of the videos on screen, that could be the difference in passing your next exam, but as always on that bombshell, I'll see you next time. Cheers.